Welcome to Digital Asset News, taking top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today we've got some pretty interesting stuff. First up, Bitcoin price will bolt higher if Biden wins. Rise slower with Trump, says Max Kaiser. And if you don't know Max Kaiser, he's a pretty outgoing type of guy, big Trump supporter, so it's kind of surprising what he's talking about here. But in all honesty, what he's going to say right now, nobody's going to like. Also, Voyager Digital buys European crypto exchange focused on institutional investors. And what this says to me is that Voyager wants to branch out to the European market. And on the heels of the fantastic news of PayPal offering to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrencies of four projects, which XRP was not one, Ripple Executive explains why PayPal is excluding XRP from new crypto business. Which is going to lead us into one of the most depressing stories I've seen in a long time. US moves to cast a wider net for catching money launderers, crypto or otherwise. And even though I think we need a little regulation, this is going way, way, way overboard. Well, before we get out, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is Saturday, October 24th, and things are looking pretty good. It is 4 p.m. Texas time, and uh, Bitcoin still holding strong above 13K, and we, uh, we're at 13,100. 13, so it's, uh, it's doing its thing, and uh, I'm actually pretty surprised and uh, cautiously optimistic about what could happen in the future. So we're up 1.3% for 24 hours, 15, almost 16% for a one week charge. So that is great news. Ethereum up 0.4% to 410. Hopefully we can get to that 425, maybe even 450, up 12% for seven days. Tether's tether. XRP tied to the quarter, 25 cents. Not too bad though. Hey, it's staying strong, it's staying stable. That's great. Bitcoin Cash 1.6. Of course, they are a part of that PayPal integration. Maybe we should call Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin the new PayPal Mafia. Anyhow, Chainlink. Chainlink's up uh, almost $13. That is massive. 20% uh, for the week, so pretty darn good. Everything, let's, let's just be honest. Everything's up. Everything's great. Uh, great stories, great news. Uh, everybody's happy. Dancing in the streets. Fantastic. Let's see if there's any real losers out there. Uh, NEM, 1.4. Look, if negative 1.4 is the worst we get, uh, still a pretty great day. And that's, well, 2.3 for Aave. Hey, what are you going to do? 0 0.2, 1 2. This is a great weekend. I mean, usually, I mean, how long does it actually stay up like this uh, after we have good news, especially on a Saturday? If this holds through Sunday, uh, we're going to see some pretty big numbers because Sunday is usually when everything just takes a little bit of a little bit or a big of a dip. So we will find out. And yeah, that's what's going on the market. So I'm pretty happy. Let's uh, jump into today's top stories. So first up, uh, if you don't know Max Kaiser, he is a pretty outgoing guy. Big Bitcoin maximalist. Everything else is trash. That kind of person. Which, you know, hey, good for him. But uh, he sat down with Cointelegraph and just had a little frank discussion, as he usually does. And some of the things he says are they're pretty entertaining, I must admit. So he first talks about Paul Tudor Jones. I'm not going to get into that because everybody's talking about how Paul Tudor Jones says Bitcoin's great. It's like investing into Amazon or Apple at the very beginning. Uh, no, that's not uh, that's not the big story. This is interesting. And he's got a great point. So they asked him, were you surprised the news that PayPal is entering the Bitcoin and crypto space? And he says, no. PayPal, like all companies, came to the realization faster than others that Bitcoin is an existential threat to their business. And to ignore it, would mean going out of business. So you have to think back and really mull that over. Do you, do you think that businesses will go completely out of business if they don't adopt Bitcoin? I don't know if it's that far, but I will say this, any kind of financial institution, any kind of bank, any kind of payment processor, if they don't adopt Bitcoin, I mean, or cryptocurrency digital assets, uh, they're really risking themselves to really fall by the wayside with uh, innovation happening all around it. Look, nobody wants to be Blockbuster. That is, a, it, it's, it's amazing. Blockbuster became a, just became a verb because of uh, what had happened to it as it could have actually bought Netflix uh, when it was coming up. They didn't. And uh, now there's like one Blockbuster in Alaska or something. So in all honesty, uh, I think right here, he's totally correct. And uh, we'll see how it all plays out in the future. Moving down, he talks about, and before I talk about this one, let me just preface it with, um, he's going to talk about Peter Schiff. Peter Schiff is a huge gold bug. Uh, he hates Bitcoin. At least he says that. But I think he's just a great marketer because, uh, you know, he's got to say Bitcoin sucks because he's, a, you know, he's all into gold. So why would you say that Bitcoin's awesome if you're selling gold? So the problem with Schiff here is that he did something a little goofy, allegedly, allegedly. Uh, he opened up a bank in Costa Rica and he's under investigation by the United States for money laundering 
and bypassing a bunch of different laws with this bank. So it will remain to be seen what happens. But if it if he is proven guilty, that would be enormous. And again, it is allegedly. I'm not here to uh, dance on anybody's grave prematurely. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. So Max gets asked about uh, this particular topic. They say, uh, in June, you said that Peter Schiff would buy Bitcoin at 50000 is the price still the same? And he writes back or says back, yes, I predict that the combination of his business failing plus his legal fees will force him to finally succumb to reality and will come to Bitcoin with his tail between his legs, begging forgiveness, and the timing will be around Bitcoin 50,000. So, I mean, no one wants to dance in anybody's grave and kick them while they're down, but uh, Max has no problem <laughs> with, with doing that. And again, it's all allegedly, so we'll see how it all plays out, but uh, that, was, uh, that was quite the rub. Moving on, he states, uh, the questions asked is, gold bugs say that gold will win regardless of who wins the U.S. election. Who do you think is best for Bitcoin, Biden or Trump? How do you expect Bitcoin will react to the election results next month? So before I read it, I'm just going to tell you right now that nobody, nobody on the left, the right or the middle is going to like this answer because <laughs> it's just it's just a loaded answer and it's actually pretty funny. So Max says, a Biden win means a win for corruption and the deep state. So I would expect Bitcoin's price to bolt higher as people panic by unconfiscatable Bitcoin before Biden's socialist jackbooted thugs start confiscating everything in a replay of 1938 crystal knot. And uh, so, I mean, <laughs> whichever side you're on, at first you're probably like, yeah, Biden's going to be great. And then he comes back it's like, well... He, he might be good for crypto, but he's bad for everything else. And, he, and then he says, you know, he goes, but with Trump, the U.S. has a chance at a more orderly tradition. Two Bitcoins, the price would move up more slowly. And then, you know, if since you're in the space, you're like, well, I don't want that to happen either. So you kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. And again, this, uh, I'm, this channel is not political. There's a ton of other channels you can go to to go find politics. I mean, it's all running rampant. I'm just going to say this. I will probably just vote for Brock Pierce. For president as he is running for the president of the united states you don't know brock pierce he's been involved in cryptocurrency quite some time also uh, was a part of the mighty ducks he's a child actor but he is founder of blockchain capital so uh, i like that so again this is just a cryptocurrency digital asset channel let's not go into politics uh we know where the space is going right it doesn't really matter which president really gets uh, elected which senator comes in or congressman or judge or whatever else Cryptocurrency digital assets are, are going to dominate over the next couple of years. And uh, we are in the right place at the right time. And I think we can all rally around that. So moving on, he states that Michael Saylor, or the question is Michael Saylor said that he bought Bitcoin to protect cash reserves from melting like an ice cube. Do you think Google, Amazon, etc., will make similar realizations? And Max gives a pretty thought out answer. It's, it's great. He says, yes. The inflation genie is out of the bottle and cash is trash. But the important thing here is that Michael Saylor went against the prevailing wisdom of buying back his own stock, a move that takes advantage of a reckless money printing Fed and instead essentially goes to war with the Fed by embracing Bitcoin, an asset hard coded to destroy the Fed. And, uh, you know, if you really think about that, that is the big thing. So whether you have fiscal policy, monetary policy, uh, the Fed is doing it all. And they have a lot of power uh, that they are wielding right now. And once you have power, it is hard to give that power back. So don't expect this to be a nice, smooth transition from the Fed to cryptocurrency digital assets. Expect this to take a long time. Expect it to be very bumpy. Expect it to be very dirty. Uh, but in the end, I think we're on the right side. And I will say this, and this is a, an article that I had referenced before. It's uh, from a website called Bitcoin Treasuries. And when he talks about that these other publicly traded companies or just corporations or entities in, in general are going to look at Bitcoin a little bit differently. I mean, look at what's happening. I mean, Mike was, Michael Saylor was the first one for MicroStrategy. Uh, he really was. And they bought a massive amount of Bitcoin and they bought 425 million. Well, today that value is 500 million. So they made a cool 75 million. And how long? How long has it been? Three weeks? Four? I, I can't remember. Three weeks, four weeks? Something like that. So uh, that's pretty good. And all these other companies that are sitting on their, their, their fiat, their, their treasury, they're probably thinking to themselves, hmm, maybe this isn't as unstable as we thought it was. I'm going to tell you right now, Michael Saylor is going to go down as a visionary because he's going to be the first one to do it successfully. Nobody wants to be first, 
but nobody wants to be last. And you got all the other companies like Galaxy Digital, Mike Novogratz. I mean, they bought at 134 uh, and now it's worth 217. Square, they made a cool 11 million over what, a couple weeks? And everybody's up. So congratulations to all those guys. I mean, fantastic. This is actually, you know, showing the light to everybody else. Uh, Stone Ridge, uh, the latest one, they put 150 million in and, uh, well, they have 27, 28, somewhere. They, they're up a lot. They're up like $27 million. Uh, and that's in like two weeks. So you can't beat those kind of returns. Good luck finding that in the traditional market. So these companies are to look from the outside in and they're gonna say, you know what? We need to get in on that. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. Next up, this was huge. Voyager Digital buys European crypto exchange focused on institutional investors. And this is what a company needs to do, make big moves. And I am very happy Voyager is doing these types of things. So what's going on? Well, crypto asset broker Voyager Digital is buying LGO Markets, a French crypto exchange focused on corporate investors. The two firms will merge under one brand, Voyager, and the two separate tokens, VGX and LGO, will also merge. The deal grants Voyager, a Canadian securities exchange listed firm, I didn't know they were in Canada, that's interesting, uh, access to the European retail market through LGO's virtual asset service, provider license held with the French financial regulator. So they are uh, converging uh, North America and European. And what this says to me is that Voyager wants to reach out to a lot of new customers. And this is the best way they could do it. Uh, just like with PayPal when they bought BitGo, or have, excuse me, they haven't bought BitGo yet, but they're under heavy negotiations. I think it'll happen. They need the custodian services. We talked about this yesterday. And, and instead of them just creating it from scratch, they're like, you know what? A lot of money to be made. Uh, we need to start moving quickly, quickly because we were dragging our feet before. Let's just buy a company. <laughs> That's what they're going to do. And the same thing's happening uh, over here with, with Voyager. So uh, congratulations to them uh, as this goes through. This is, this is going to be massive, massive just to reach out to a whole new spectrum of customers. Anyhow, to complete the acquisition, Voyager will issue 1 million shares whose value in part determine the ultimate deal price. So they're going to issue these shares and whatever that price comes to, it's going to probably balloon up the actual price uh, of what is being uh, transacted. The other part will depend on the value of the merged in uh, house crypto token, because remember, they're going to uh, combine LGO and VGX uh, to their governance token. Now, this, according to reports, will feature decentralized finance functions. Let me say that again. DeFi functions such as community governance and staking at initial interest rate of 7%. So can you imagine to have a pretty stable coin like Voyager and then get 7% on top of that just to hold it? So I don't know. Well, here, let's just take a look real quick. So Voyager, uh, it's at 16 cents right now. It's up 8, which, is, which makes total sense, right? It's up 8.4%. So uh, you can buy, I don't know, maybe you want to buy 10 of them. Maybe you're feeling lucky. You're like, you know what? I got a buck sixty. I'm gonna put it. You know what I mean? Uh, let's say you put in ten thousand. I don't know how much you got, and then just it goes up. I don't know, two x, five x, ten x. I have no idea because the bull run's coming, and then you're gonna get seven percent on top of that APY. So that's a pretty good deal, I must tell you. And it makes me take a real hard look at Voyager token. To see Back to the story, and this is where it gets a little wonky. It states that shares of Voyager fell 2.3% to 0.56 Canadian dollars or 43 cents in CSE trading Friday. The stock is down, it doesn't make sense. The stock is down more than 16% since the news of the acquisition broke out on October 21st. Voyager has a market value of 36 million. So I had to take a look at it. I'm like, why would the stock price go down during a merger and acquisition. That doesn't make any sense. So I take a look at it and here is Voyager Digital. Uh, here's their uh, marker. And looking at October 19th, 19th, here's the 20th. It was at 43 cents for some reason. Then a spiked up to 53, October 20th. And it was pretty flat, uh, a little bit of a dip here to 48. But then as time has gone on, 57, now 60, and then the closing was at 62 cents. So this makes more sense. So maybe initially there was something else going on, but right now it looks pretty pretty strong. I mean, I would only assume that hey, if you're gonna you know merge with another big entity, your price would probably go up. So that's just one thing. And then later on uh, in the next sentence, it states Voyager CEO Hugo Renaden was quoted as saying, and I was like, wait, what? The CEO, I Steve, and I had him on this week on Digital Asset News. So I don't know who Hugo in, 
I had to look him up. So Voyager CEO Hugo Renaden. I took a look, and now it makes more sense. They just kind of uh, flipped it around. We all make mistakes, right? Even me. Even even me. I make a ton of mistakes. Uh, Hugo Renaden is the co-founder and CEO at LGO Group. Okay, so got that. So I don't know who wrote this uh, article. Maybe Danish. <laughs> Danish. I'm just kidding, Danish. Uh, but this is what uh, the LGO CEO states. He states, European clients will be able to access the Voyager app using the LGO regulatory setup. In Europe, and both LGO and VGX tokens will be merged into a new token. So that's uh, massive. I don't know if that's going to affect uh, VGX, if it's going to be like VGX new, like, like Aave is, or how it's all going to work. But uh, I'm going to be giving everybody updates as this comes about. So this should be good. He added that the new token will have more utility to the benefit of token holders in US, Europe, and elsewhere. So when I took a look at this, the one thing I could think of was like, this is kind of like Binance. I mean, Binance does all these things, right? They start to do mergers and acquisitions. They start to, you know, give out their or put out the Binance coin, get into do a decentralized finance, do a lot of different things, even leverage trading, which I'm not a big fan of. So when I see Voyager making moves like this, I'm like, that's what a company's supposed to do. You either grow or you die. And I got to tell you, that makes me pretty bullish on Voyager. So let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our last stories. Next up, oh, this is good. This is a good one because uh, this is a question that I had myself, which was Ripple Executive, Brad, explains why PayPal is excluding XRP from new crypto business. And this was the quiz when I took a look at PayPal and they said, hey, we're going to do Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. I'm like, why not XRP? Seriously, it's pretty good. It's super fast. I don't know if you've ever used it, but it is really fast. It's way faster than uh, Bitcoin is. I'll tell you that right now. So this kind of breaks into what the heck happened. So this first sentence is what I talked about. PayPal is going for those uh, four cryptos. But then Brad tells Bloomberg he thinks PayPal probably made the decision because the payments giant felt safest with those assets from a regulatory perspective. And he elaborates, PayPal, I think has said, they plan to go live with Bitcoin and Ether. And part of that goes back to the regulatory clarity. If you are a company looking at investing, investing in or building upon a technology like XRP or like other digital assets, if there's not regulatory clarity, then you're likely to go with the other ones that are clear. And he, and he goes on and says, others in the marketplace say, I'm going to start with Bitcoin and Ether because they have good housekeeping seal of approval in the U.S. But that made me think about it. And I was like, well, Bitcoin, yes. Uh, Ethereum, yes. The CFTC and the SEC kind of alluded to that, that uh, we're not going to classify these as securities because of the decentralized nature. I'm not going to get into that. We've done that a ton of times on this channel. And it really all comes down to decentralization. So you have Bitcoin and Ethereum. So Bitcoin Cash, okay, kind of on the under the umbrella, but Litecoin? Has anybody said anything about Litecoin that it's not a security, that they wouldn't classify as a security? If you know something, please put in the comment section. And because I haven't seen anything about that anywhere. So the question then is, what Brad is saying is because they picked these, well, why they pick Litecoin? And why didn't they pick XRP? I think there is another reason for it. And I'd love to hear your opinions. <laughs> I'd love to hear your opinions. Uh, everybody's got an opinion on XRP. That is for sure. So just to elaborate a little bit, uh, the whole thing with decentralization, that was the crackdown part for uh, EOS getting cracked down on by the SEC. This was in 2019. And it's kind of interesting because EOS went through a one-year ICO. Essentially, that's what it was. I know because I bought EOS during that time and they weren't on the main net. Once they got on the main net, then everything switched over and it wasn't really like an ICO. But the thing was is that the SEC said, hey, during that time when you guys weren't decentralized and you were doing that ICO, uh, you owe us money. And they busted them hard. They said, hey, pay us $24 million. And of course, EOS was like, well, we made $4.1 so all right, here's your money. And that's pretty much what happened. And then now that it's on the main net and it's considered decentralized, even though blockchain producers, there's like 20 or 21 or something crazy low like that, they say it's still decentralized, so sure. So really, it all comes down to is are you or do you have a decentralized main net and how is that working uh, out for you so we don't bust you as uh, a security? Anyhow, moving on. And of course, that is just one factor. I'm sure there's others. I don't know because I'm not in the government. I'm on the SEC. Later on, it states, in addition, Garlinghouse says he thinks uh, the fact that PayPal won't allow users to move their crypto assets to other wallets is a misstep. And that's true. Uh, everybody, everybody in the crypto sphere says the same thing. This is awful. They can't do that. This is just the worst thing ever. And, and uh, of course, they are right. I mean, it is true. It is pretty bad that you can't take it off PayPal. But uh, me personally, 
and I'm the only one, I think, uh, I could care less. Because here's the thing. Yes, people like us, you listening to this video, you know uh, the whole story behind crypto and digital assets and why it's important to uh, have your personal private keys, not your keys, not your coins, right? Uh, however, the people that are coming in, they don't care about that. They don't know about that. They look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin as like another stock to buy because they know it's going to go up and it's going to go up massively. So they don't care about the keys. Now, later on, they're going to figure it all out, right? But right now, to get mass adoption, this is what we need to really get the ball rolling. I know it's not a popular opinion, and I'm sure in the comment section people will crucify me, but it is what it is. And uh, me and you aren't going to go to PayPal to get our crypto. We're going to stick at the same exchanges. We're going to put on an annual ledger, and we're going to keep our private keys private. However, for, the, for other people, the parents, the grandparents, the uh, new people haven't really gotten into it, which is like most everybody in the world, uh, they need something like this just to get their feet wet and because they need a gateway exchange to really figure it all out. Like I said, Bitcoin to me is just gateway crypto, like it's a gateway drug to the other uh, side of cryptocurrency digital assets, but only time will tell. Now, later on, they'll some of them will figure it out. They'll come to these this channel or other channels like this. They'll go to websites. They'll really research and understand. They'll Get the whole point of censorship resistance, quantitative easing versus quantitative hardening, the decentralized nature, the transparency, and how it all works together in the global economy. They'll get that later, but not all of them, and they don't have to. The ones that want to figure it out will figure it out. Anyhow, finishing up, Ripple has floated the idea of moving its headquarters out of the U.S. to what Garlinghouse sees as a guessing game of regulations in the U.S. that creates an uneven playing field. And two things. First of all, they've already talked about Great Britain or in London, uh, because they said that they've already given them uh, regulatory clarity over there, or at least they've hinted at it. So it looks like they're going to move over to London. And second of all, all these things about regulations, this leads me to our last article, which is really awful. So the U.S. moving to cast a wider net for launderers, crypto, or the same thing, right? But this is bad. The Federal Reserve, the U.S. Central Bank, published a proposed, it's a proposed rule change Friday, asking about the recording requirements for money transfers involving virtual currencies and fiat. So what's going on? According to the rule change proposal, which I'm pretty sure is going to go through, the Fed and the Finance Crimes Enforcement Network, or FinCEN, uh, proposed modifying the thresholds at which banks must collect and store fund transfer information. Check this out. Reducing it from 3000 to 250 Let me say that again. They're going to reduce the amount that the banks must collect and pretty much report suspicious activity from 3000 to 250 I always thought it was 10000 Now I'm reading this, I'm like, 3000 that's pretty low. Now I'm looking at this, I'm like, what, 250 So $250, they're going to flag it. Really, that's what's going to happen. And this is for any transfers that go outside the U.S. The proposal would also widen the agency's definition of money to explicitly include cryptocurrency. So again, if you're new to the channel, I will just tell you my whole thing. And that is that I believe that we should have some regulation. I am not a chaos guy. I'm not just like, you know, let it all uh, hang out and just see what happens. That's, that's just not what I'm in. A lot of it comes to working with the elderly. I was in the healthcare for 15 years. I've seen a lot of the elderly population get ripped off from different scams. I mean, everything under the sun. That's why I was so big about getting rid of these scams and scam the day and things like that. When I see people getting scammed, especially the elderly, they're not, they don't have time to work that all back. If they lose their entire life savings, this shouldn't have happened. Of course, we can do education and everything else, but it's great to have somebody to be that type of protector. Now, here's the flip side. Sometimes you have regulation, it's like a slice of cake. Works out great. Have a couple bites, everybody's happy, I feel full, going to bed. The problem with regulation is you get too much regulation because you just go overboard. And that's the person that eats the whole pie or the whole cake and it just messes up everything, destroys your whole night too. So for regulation, this is the essential example of eating two cakes in one helping. This is ridiculous. There's no reason why this should be done. However, I could be wrong. Let me know what you think in the comments section. And that is it for today's video. So first, I want to say thanks for sticking with me all the way to the end. Really appreciate it. Also, if you didn't know, I've got a second channel. It's called Dan Clips. And I did it for two reasons. First of all, time is money. 
and some of these, these videos go a little bit too long so I break them up into clips so if you're having a very shortened day got too much going on head over to Dan clips because everything we talk about here is gonna be segmented into bite size clips the second reason I did it was because hey YouTube could shut down this channel anytime they seem to have done it and they do it a lot so I just needed a backup essentially so you can always find the second channel in the description of every one of my videos link looks just like this and if you check that out that would help me out uh, tremendously and I really appreciate it so again that's it thanks for watching if you like these videos there'll be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right I'll let PayPal do their magic and uh, that is all enjoy your weekend see you in the next one